In today's lesson, we will cover inequalities in two triangles. Take a minute to read the learning goal on the scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. In triangles that have two pairs of congruent sides, there is a relationship between the included angles and the third pair of sides. Take a look at these doors. When you close a door, the angle between the door and the frame at the hinges gets smaller. The relationship between the measure of the hinge angle and the length of the opposite side is the basis of the side angle side inequality theorem, also known as the hinge theorem. The hinge theorem states, if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle and the included angles are not congruent, then the longer side is opposite the larger included angle. So if you look at this diagram, since side BA is congruent to side YX and side AC is congruent to side XZ, but the measure of angle A is larger than the measure of angle X, then side BC is longer than side YZ. In example one, we will use the hinge theorem. Which of the following statements must be true? Okay, we know that side SA is congruent to side OY. We know that side AK is congruent to side OU. Since the measure of angle A is 90 degrees, but the measure of angle O is 70 degrees, the side opposite angle A, SK, must be greater than the side opposite angle O, side YU. So the correct answer would be B. Pause the video and do you try number one. What inequality relates the length of side LN to the length of side OQ? Since the length of segment ML is 4 and the length of segment PO is 4, we know that these two sides are congruent. Since the length of segment MN is 7 and the length of segment PQ is 7, we know that these two sides are congruent. Let's look at the included angles. The measure of angle M is 125, and the measure of angle P is 78. Since the measure of angle M is greater than the measure of angle P, we know the side opposite angle M, side LN, must have a greater length than the side opposite angle P, side OQ. For part B, in triangle ABC, the length of side AB is 3, the length of side BC is 4, and the length of side CA is 6. Let's start by drawing triangle ABC. In triangle PQR, the length of side PQ is 3, the length of side QR is 5, and the length of side RP is 6. Let's go ahead and draw that triangle now. How can you use indirect reasoning to explain why the measure of angle P is greater than the measure of angle A? Since angle A is opposite the side that has a length of 4, and angle P is opposite the side that has a length of 5, indirect reasoning would tell me since the length of QR is longer than the length of side BC, then angle P should have a greater measure. It must be open more at the hinge so that this distance is longer. In example two, we will apply the hinge theorem. The diagram shows the position of a swing at two different times. As the speed of the swing ride increases, the angle between the chain and side AB increases. Is the ride farther from point A during time one or during time two? Explain how the hinge theorem justifies your answer. Since the lengths of segment AB and segment BC stay the same throughout the ride, the rider is going to be farther from point A during time 2 because the angle measure is larger during time 2 than it is during time 1. Pause the video and do you try number 2. The diagram shows a pair of scissors in two different positions. In which position is the distance between the tips of the blades greater? Use the hinge theorem to justify your answer. Since the length of the blades stay the same and the only thing that changes is the angle measure between the blades, then the distance between the blades 
where the angle is 40 degrees is going to be longer than the distance between the blades where the angle measure is 35. The converse of the hinge theorem is also true. If two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle and the third sides are not congruent, then the larger included angle is opposite the longer third side. So, since the length of side BA is equal to the length of side YX and the length of side AC is equal to the length of side XZ, then since the length of side BC is greater than the length of side YZ, the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle X. In example three, we will use the converse of the hinge theorem. What is the range of possible values for X? Since the length of segment RU is equal to the length of segment UT and the length of segment US is equal to itself by the reflexive property of equality, we want to now take a look at the length of the third sides. Since the length of segment RS is 15 and the length of segment SU is 10, we know that the angle opposite the longer side will be greater. Since 60 is opposite the longer side, 15, we know it is greater than 5x minus 20, which is opposite the shorter side. Solving this inequality will give us the upper value of our range. To get the lower value of our range, we know that an angle must be greater than 0. So I need to set 5x minus 20 greater than 0. Let's use the addition property of equality to add 20 to both sides of this inequality. So 80 will be greater than 5x. Now we'll use the division property of equality to divide both sides by 5. 16 will be greater than x. So the upper number of our range is going to be 16. Let's go ahead and use the addition property of equality over here to find the lower value of our range. So here we will have 5x is greater than 20. Go ahead and divide both sides by 5, and x will be greater than 4. We now want to rewrite our inequality such that 4 is less than x, which is less than 16. So our value of x can be any number between 4 and 16. Pause the video and do you try number 3. What is the range of possible values for x? Again, we see that two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another. We know that angle K is opposite a side that is 7 units long, and angle N is opposite a side that is 9 units long. So angle N will be larger than angle K. Now, let's substitute 90 degrees for angle N and 3x plus 18 for angle K. Now let's solve the inequality by using the subtraction property of equality and the division property of equality. So x must be less than 24. Now remember to find the low end of your range because we know that all angles must be greater than 0, so we know that 3x plus 18 is greater than 0. Now let's solve this inequality. Use the subtraction property of equality and 3x will be greater than negative 18. Divide both sides by 3 and x must be greater than negative 6. Remember, it is okay to have a negative value for x, just not a negative value for a measure of an angle or a length of a side. Now just rewrite your inequality to show the high and low end range for your x value. So negative 6 must be less than x, which must, which must be less than 24. In example 4, we will prove relationships in triangles. Let's look at what we're supposed to prove. We want to prove that the measure of angle BAE is greater than the measure of angle BEA. Let's start with our first given that the length of side BA is equal to the length of side DE. Since both triangle BAE and triangle DEA share side AE by the reflexive property of equality, the length of side AE is equal to the length of side AE. Let's look at our second given that states that the length of side BE is greater than the length of side DA. Since we now have two sides of one triangle congruent to two sides of another, but side BE is longer than side DA, 
we can state that angle BAE is larger than angle DEA by the converse of the hinge theorem. Remember, we're trying to prove that angle BAE is greater than angle BEA. If I look, angle BEA plus angle DEB make up angle DEA by the angle addition postulate. Since angle BEA is part of angle DEA, we can say that angle DEA is greater than angle BEA by the comparison property of inequality. And finally, since angle BAE is greater than angle DEA, and angle DEA is greater than angle BEA, by the transitive property of inequality, we can say that the measure of angle BAE is greater than the measure of angle BEA. Pause the video and do U try number four. In this U try, we are asked to prove that the length of segment LM is greater than the length of segment MN. They tell us that the measure of angle MON is 80 and that O is the midpoint of segment LN. Let's start with the first given that the measure of angle MON is 80. Since angle LOM and angle MON are a linear pair, angle LOM is supplementary to angle MON, which makes the measure of angle LOM 100 degrees. Now let's look at our second given that point O is the midpoint of segment LN. By the definition of midpoint, we know that segment LO will be congruent to segment NO. And by the reflexive property of congruence, segment MO is congruent to segment MO. Since we have two sides of one triangle that are congruent to two sides of another, but the included angles are not congruent, we can use the hinge theorem to state that the side opposite the larger angle, or side LM, has a length that is greater than the side opposite the smaller angle, side MN. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If there's something you don't understand, be sure to ask me in class. If you rock that lesson check, go ahead and do the challenge. Now, take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. Hopefully you've climbed higher on the scale than where you were when we began the lesson.